Hello everyone, hope you're well. I mentioned that we've been having a really good kind of clear few weeks now. Um, I think we're into almost a full second week of goodness. No kind of, because uh, we're in between waiting for the HCP, waiting for diagnoses, waiting for steps to happen. We're just in this clear limbo where work's nice and busy, home's nice and calm, everything's just rattling. I feel like this week has gone by like a runaway train and the only thing that I, in the whole gap of it all, that I've really needed to think about is, there's a really, so our house, we've lived in it nearly five years, which means that we're, I think we're up to, coming up to four years, and that means that we're, we've got to start planning for our help to buy. And it's been in the back of my mind, but it's not been a focus because of obviously the stuff with Ollie and school and life and stuff like that. So I've been kind of not thinking about it, but knowing I needed to think about it, and then, as an aside, this is a slight tangent, but Kev and I have joked about this on podcasts, and I might have mentioned it on the videos before, but I swear, like, we both we both have this jokey theory that um, things things keep happening, or things wind down, or, like, the way Kev always thinks of it is that he's the main character in his own kind of life story, and we're just supporting cast members to keep popping in and out. Being e egotistical, like him, I assume that actually it's my story, and he's the person dipping in and out, and... We always joke about how it, we were getting panicky, that everything we were following it was was ending. The Walking Dead finished, and we both were into that. Game of Thrones finished, we were both into that. You know, blah, 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 blah. Loads of stuff was just coming to an end. All the book series, all the TV series, all the comics. Loads of things that we were into finished. I thought Spurs were going to win the Champions League, and that was going to be Spurs done. You know, it, it was concerning that I'd achieved all the things I'd set out to achieve, and everything was ending. And that's always been our joke, that like it seemed that way and actually now new things are coming out I'm thinking okay we've been picked up for a new season and that kind of joke but one of the things that makes me feel more weird about that joke it is a joke and I know it's not real but the other thing that makes me go oh what the hell is how people that I need to help me through something just keep appearing I don't know if I, I must just look for them that must just be the answer but obviously, I'd known Kevin and Anna for a long time. I'd known their situation with Andy. I'd learned a lot from them, just from, from knowing them and visiting them and working with them and being friends with them. And so when it came to, you know, Ollie, it was like, okay, I know some stuff about this. It's not as scary as it could have been, but, you know, it could still be scary. Um, when I wanted to be a teacher, there's other people I knew who happened to want to do that. It was easy, it was simple, it was really straightforward. It worked because of that. Um, when I needed a solution to leaving Essex, a university appeared in Peterborough that never existed before that moment. So it's lots of odd spiralling things, like I need a new job, my friend appeared, I've just started a company, come work for me. Um, we got to the problem with school, with Ollie, his wife now works with us and she's an expert in Senko stuff, used to be a Senko at school. All that stuff's rolling on and I'm thinking, this is really bizarre. They're just falling into place at the perfect time every time. It's just like, it's like someone's casting these people. This person's an expert in exactly his problem. So the reason for that tangent and the connection to the house thing is, we've just had somebody start at work maybe three months ago and out of the blue, she's like, I got a house with persimmon next door and uh, yeah, we've had to sort the free old on it. We've got that. And I'm like, I just did that. And next thing that sorts the help to buy. And I'm like, I'm just about to sort that. So like on and off in the past week, we've been talking about what we need to do and how we need to do it. And she's been helping. She's done a bit of research. I'm doing research. And, and it's just like, what are the odds? Why does this keep happening? <laughs> it's like, I'm not, look, I'm, not, I'm not searching for somebody I know who's going through it. They're coming to me, they're popping up out of the blue. So um, we've been talking about getting, getting this nonsense, or help to buy is yet another massive problem that I won't rant about, but it's like a, the government set this scheme up to help people on a housing ladder, but it actually just stings you in the backside massively. And, and when it seemed like a great idea to get on the property ladder, now we're five years in, it's like, ah, okay, this isn't great. Uh, this is exactly what I don't need when I don't need it. Um, it should be okay, it should be fine. But what I've had to do is go get a house valued, um, which we've booked in for the weekend. And man, am I nervous now. Like, I'm hoping this will pop up, we'll get some sort of solution on this, or people will help me realise that it's not a big deal. But I booked them to come Saturday, and Claire's saying to me that our house will probably, it needs a lot doing. It doesn't need a lot, lot doing, it just needs a lick of paint and like the fence is slightly askew in the corner where a storm happened and stuff like that. And I don't know whether that's going to affect the cost of the house 
when a valuer comes around. I feel like that's the kind of thing that if they valued it at X, somebody might come around and go, hmm, it's got about five grand's worth of work to do, knock it down five grand or 10 grand or whatever. And and that's standard banter with selling a house. You know, you, you if they said a house was worth, I don't know, we paid 205, I think. If they said it was worth 220, we'd value it at 230 and the estate agents would get knocked back 10 or something like that. That's standard house stuff. But now I'm really worried that they're going to come around and they're going to say, you've really not done enough here. So the value of the house hasn't gone up much. I don't really know how it works. I just assumed that they all went up based on demand. And um, we were weighing up the odds of whether we want to just remortgage and pay off the help to buy and have a higher mortgage or whether we want to... Do you know what? As I'm saying this out loud, I'm thinking, Kev used to be a mortgage advisor. It's happened again. Like, I know somebody who's an expert in this. I will ask him, but I'll carry on with what I'm talking about. Um, so we're also weighing up whether the house could solve a lot of our problems. We, I mentioned in the past about potentially moving, but now I'm kind of thinking, would that be a potential answer? Would it be worth us looking at moving into Peterborough and being on the doorstep of all the Peterborough help, being in the same catchment as the school that Emily goes to, the secondary school she potentially wants to go to rather than the one she's likely to go to, which isn't a bad school or anything, but it's raising all these extra questions that it seems like a lot of work, but I don't know if that would help or hinder or whether that'd be the worst thing to do at this stage when we're just about to get the process going. Not that we'd sell that quick, but obviously the moment I talked to Claire about that, she was like, okay, let's have a look at it. Let's weigh up all the options. But Ollie overheard from like the other side of the house and he's worried that we're going to leave and I don't want to freak him out, especially when things are going well at the moment. But um, yeah, I'm just intrigued as to what to do with it now. And I... I <sighs> I don't really know how valuations work. I assume they're going to walk around the house. They're going to say, yeah, it's a four bed house. It's decent size. It's got a decent sized garden. It's worth X. These traditionally sell at this time and place for this. But I don't know whether they're going to, I'm worried they're going to be honest like the leeches. They're going to be honest trying to get us to flog the house when I just want that number so I can go and do the rest of the things. I'm sort of thinking whether that can solve everything that is pressing at me at the moment. But I don't know. It's, um, it's just more adult stuff that I don't really have the the brain space for, but it's just appeared out of nowhere. Um, the other thing I'm desperately trying to figure out, so many people are going on holiday at the moment, and like Kev's now planning his uh, bloody Centre Parks job, and I'm just like, damn it, like <laughs> I want to go away. And I'd already convinced Claire that we weren't going away, and now I'm like, I want to go away, we need to go away. I've got two weeks off at the end of August. I feel like it'd be brilliant to go away but I have no idea where to get a last minute trip that would actually be affordable. Um, even all the places like Butlins and Skegness and stuff like that are all booked up. And I'm like, we can't even do like the, the thing that I used to do when I was a kid. My mum and dad would take us somewhere like a sun holiday trip for 15 quid or something. And they're all gone. They're all long gone. I'm screwed. But uh, I just feel like it's weird. When I get brain space, it doesn't give me time to calm down. Other problems pop in. And then I try and, uh, a fly just went right at me then. Um, other problems pop in and um, I just feel like it's never ending. There's just a never ending pool of treacle to swim through at the moment, isn't there? Um, I'm trying to think if there's been, there was another meeting at school, uh, lots and lots of tears. Uh, Ollie's TA is really gutted that she's leaving and not gonna work with him anymore. Um, made Claire cry, made the Senko cry, everyone was crying. I got a fright, Claire texted me saying, um, we had a really tearful meeting. I picked up the phone straight like, what happened? And thinking that they'd said, I don't know, something really bad or they were really upset or something had happened. But um, no, it was just that the TA's really gutted and said it's been a real pleasure working with him, which is really nice to, to hear because you do worry that, I don't know, that they might think, and they're never going to be like, that was awful, are they? But, you know, you worry that they might be like, oh, I'm leaving because I'm so stressed or they leave quietly or something like that. But, you know, and I don't mean that to sound like I'm thinking they would, but it's nice to know that they're that affected by the fact they're leaving. Um, we realised as well, we've only got three more sessions with Ollie's one-to-one after-school care person assuming that he goes back full time next year and I'm just thinking he's gonna have a lot of change I'm a bit worried about that I don't know how that's gonna how he's gonna I mean he's got six weeks off to cope with it so hopefully he won't particularly notice and it'll be enough of a routine but oh uh, this is probably the biggest the thing about the six weeks that I'm most worried about is the fact that it's such a big change and not only that it's a big change it's gonna lead to a bigger change when he changes class but it's a big change 
in that lots of people are leaving, lots of people are disappearing, they're not coming back. The one-to-one -one carer could potentially, but the odds of her being free enough to do that again from September seems unlikely. Um, it's just an odd time, and I, I'm hoping that that doesn't derail the really nice calm we've been having. Um, I don't think, I think things are unpredictable enough that if we knew, you know, it's going to stay calm until it doesn't stay calm, but there's not going to be a cause for that other than something unforeseen. So it's one of those weird things that I don't think it's going to cause any uncalm, but it's, it's, uh, I, I feel like because there's nothing here, all the things back here are coming forward um, and, and going, oh, what about this? What about that? What about that? And living in this constant kind of state of like fearing the phone ringing or whatever is very bizarre, but I'm creating problems now. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm just constantly solving problems and it's probably keeping me active, keeping me going, to be fair. I'd love to know what life would be like if I had none to figure out, but then I suppose that's what everyone's like. Um, before, last thing before I wrap up, I'd really, you can probably tell by the way I'm just rabbiting, I'd really struggled for something to talk about tonight. And then I thought the big thing going on for me is the house, sorting that out. But um, I'm, still, I'm still stuck in that. I just need to think of something entertaining. Um, not because Ollie said I wasn't entertaining, although that really underlined the issue for me. But I don't know. I just, I'm not, I, I feel like I'm not doing my full self in these videos and I want to do my, my, you know, be myself in it. Be sheepdog. Be the ridiculous specimen that I am um, when all things are normally happening. But um, no, I, f I feel like, you know, I like these, sharing these thoughts with people and getting your ideas and chatting about your your things going on. And um, yeah, I'm, in the meantime, that's still really cool. I just, someone said to me earlier, what would you do if you, could? I mean, this, this is the problem. The same person who's asking, talking about the house was telling me about the job her partner does. It's like a family business. And then she was asking what I'd do if I could do my own thing. And I was like, don't ask me that. That's like the biggest that's like the, the, the right at the back, the thing that's always there, like the core problem that I can't solve, the the sheepdog conundrum, I'm gonna call it. Um, I don't even know if that's, that's the right word, I think it is, but the sheepdog conundrum is the, what's my, what's my kind of thing that I'm gonna suddenly crack and be like, boom. Um, I tried to explain to her that it's writing, but I'm so, hapless at it at the moment like i'm doing fine with it but equally i'm just i haven't touched my like work in progress book in three weeks because every time i look at it i'm like oh um i know how i want to end it i just it's annoying me and somebody asked me if they could see it and i was like hell no like it's trash i need to rewrite it once i've finished it um, God, no, I'm not showing anyone it kind of thing. Um, then they were asking if I'd look at theirs. And I was like, no, because then I feel really bad about mine. Um, so yeah, I'm avoiding that. But I just need to have an idea. And I'm gonna, which she was saying to me, you might, you know, you'll have an idea eventually, even if it's when you're 70. And I was like, oh, I will just die if I get to 70 and have an idea. Because I feel like I should have had that idea 40 years ago when I was 30 something. And that would have been great. Um, but uh, it's... I can't help myself. If I could find a cure for not wanting to keep searching for that idea, I'd take it just so I didn't have to keep thinking about it. I think if 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 a hundred percent of my brain space was there, at least forty percent of it is consumed by fi finding that idea at all times. Um, everything else is kind of pushing against that. Obviously, the Ollie uh, situation is usually probably 60% of that with me still trying to figure it out in the background, which is a little bit selfish, but that's just how I, I, I can't help it. It consumes the back of my mind and I can't beat it. And I don't know what, I, the moment I've got an idea, I feel like I'll just go, Voof. but uh, I'm such an idiot. Um, so yeah, anyway, I've wasted too much of your time. I'm sorry about that with my waffling. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. Um, I, I, there's too much going on, and I think that's probably it. I think it's probably less than forty percent. And if I had forty percent of the brain space to look at it, I'd probably figure it out. But um, I just, yeah, I think if I had no problems to solve, I'd probably just watch TV all day, and that'd be terrible, and I'd be a mess. So this is probably healthy and good. But anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll catch up with you at the weekend, I think. Although Emily's got a friend round, so I'll probably have to record Sunday night. But yeah, cheers. I'll see you later.